Yo, what's up everyone? Today, we're diving into the history of the Washington Redskins and discussing why the name should have never been changed. Back in 2020, the Washington Redskins football team changed their name due to pressure by the media claiming that the name is offensive. So in this video, we're going to review the history of the team and the brand to see if whether or not the name and logo is actually racist. Additionally, several Native American groups are now demanding that the football team goes back to being called the Redskins. You'll hear from my point of view as well as other Native Americans as to why the Washington Redskins should have kept their name. If you didn't know, I am a lifelong diehard Redskins fan. My family, for generations, have been lifelong diehard Redskins fans. The Redskins football team is ingrained in my soul, and ain't nobody can take that away from me. So when the Redskins changed their name, millions of fans, including myself, are now considered to be racist for supporting a team that was never meant to be offensive in the first place. To my family, Redskins has meant football and only football for generations. And I speak for millions of Redskins fans who feel like we're being silenced. Just go to any of the football games. People are still chanting the old name in 2024. With that being said, I want to at least acknowledge the people who dislike the name or find it to be offensive. Obviously, they changed the name for a reason, because there is a select group of people who may find it to be derogatory. Words mean a lot of things to a lot of different people. In this case, we have the word Redskin, which to some people represents the legendary football team, while others find it to be insulting. So before we go any further, I want to establish that the point of this video is to showcase my perspective as a lifelong diehard Redskins fan. There are two sides to every coin, and everyone is entitled to their own feelings and perspective. So if at any point in this video it seems like I'm biased, I am. But that's because I love the football team. 25 years ago, I was a Redskins fan. Today, I'm a Redskins fan. Tomorrow, I will still be a Redskins fan. Context is everything, and the intent of the football team was not to be racist. The name was chosen in 1933 to honor Native Americans, particularly because the team had a famous Native American coach and four Native American players. Prior to this, the team used to be called the Boston Braves, but they rebranded to the Redskins to prevent confusion with the baseball team. In fact, the Boston Red Sox and the Boston Redskins played in the same stadium for a few years. The Redskins were the only minority representation in the NFL and in actuality, it represented a real person, not a mascot. King Tammany is the original inspiration for the Redskins' native imagery. Tammany was an iconic symbol of peace and diplomacy in the 17th century. He was known for his noble leadership and was adopted as a legendary patron saint of American patriotism. If you ask me, that's a pretty damn cool person to represent the team. The Redskins' logo was inspired by Chief John Two Guns Whitecap. He was an honorable figure from the Blackfeet Nation and was recognized for his role as a leader and cultural ambassador ambassador of Native Americans. White Cap served as the face of the Washington Redskins for nearly 50 years. Prior to this recognition, he was one of the most famous Native Americans of the 20th century. In fact, he was the inspiration for the face that appeared in the United States Buffalo Nickel. Thomas White Cap, a family member, voiced his frustration that the family was not even consulted about the removal of the Redskins logo. White Cap said, quote, the fans want him back and we want him back. So not only do the fans want him back, but the family of the Native American chief who inspired the logo wants it back. This story covering this family had millions of people talking about it and even Elon Musk reposted it on Twitter. It's really unfortunate that the Native American family who represented the Redskins logo for nearly 50 years was never even contacted by the team about the name change. The most outrageous, infuriating thing in the world. This is what Ryan Wetzel, the grandson of the Redskins logo designer, has to say. This is an awesome, awesome logo. There's so many people that cherish this thing, you know, this name, you know, some people have their say in it, but you know, for the most part, you know, the Red Nation stands their ground. They support it. I have so many family and friends that have embraced this whole uh, franchise for the name and the logo and for it to all be taken away in the way that it was. And just that whole cancel culture ideology, it was super frustrating for me. Uh, just being the grandson of this man and not being at the table to, to kind of explain that connection. Like Ryan touched on, it's so frustrating that cancel culture has taken away something so beloved to so many people and there's seemingly nothing we can do about it, which is why I'm using my platform to stand up for what I believe in. So you know what? Let's ask some more Native Americans what they think of their name. First, we have Chief Red Hawk Brown. Let's see what he has to say. So why eradicate out my history? Why? I mean, I don't have no problem with red skin. When we went to war, we painted our faces red, our arms red, and our legs. How do you think the Blackfeet Indians got their name from the white man? Because they painted their feet from their feet all the way up their knee black. So they call them Blackfeet. I mean, is that prejudice? Huh? Is that racist? It's just so how can red skin be racist? 
How can it be? And we're not the only tribe that painted our, our faces and bodies red for war. It stood for valor, you know? Chief makes a good point. While some people think that Redskins refers to a skin tone, in actuality, some Native American tribes would paint their faces red when they went to war. It wasn't uncommon for tribes to paint their skin red, particularly in battle or ceremonial context. Personally, I think that's awesome. If the face of my football franchise represents warriors who go to battle, that's amazing. That is truly an honorable representation. Now let's go to Will Witt, who went to a Native American reservation and asked them what they thought of the Redskins. Do you find the name Washington Redskins, is that offensive to you? Um, I don't think so. I, in my personal opinion, no. Um, I am a Washington Redskins fan. You know, I don't think it's terrible, you know, because the Redskins actually came down last year to with our Native American people and taught them how to do football, the little kids, you know. I don't find it offensive. Um, I believe as Navajos and as Native Americans, we have larger issues to deal with the name calling. The Redskins, I don't, I mean, that's a historic, that's a fighter, you know what I mean? And like, you look at the Apache helicopters, you look at the Navajo code talkers, you see people jumping on airplanes saying Geronimo. So that's just admiration that the, the, the American cultures that's adapting and bringing into their their environment. Another funny video by Will Witt is when he dressed up in a sombrero and asked people about cultural appropriation. The people that got offended were random college students while the real Mexicans thought it was fantastic. This is interesting because it seems like that's the same problem with the Redskins. Yes, there may be some natives who dislike the name, but it seems like there are more white people making a fuss about it who are completely ignorant to the matter and don't know any of the honorable history of the team or the intent behind it. It's the uneducated people who claim their opinion is fact despite having no connection to the Redskins or Native Americans. Walmart is racist! Walmart is racist! Walmart is racist! It's outrageous that people who have nothing to do with the Redskins are speaking on behalf of Native Americans and telling them how they should feel. Here's what a Native American group has to feel about that part of the Naga, Native American Guardian Association. So we stand firm on Native American imagery, educating the public on where we stand on these items. You know, well, there's a misconception out there that we are against logos such as the Black Hawks, Fighting Sioux, Redskins. In fact, 90% of American Indians support these type of items. Cancel culture is taking everybody's voice away and telling us what we should feel and how we should feel. When in fact, we have the right as Americans to feel any way we want and to support anything that we wish. As he mentioned, the Washington Post conducted a poll and found that 90% of Native Americans were not even offended by the name. Moreover, in 2020, the number of Redskins football fans living in the United States was greater than the entire Native American population. So considering the fact that 9 out of 10 Native Americans don't find the name to be offensive, it's really just a tiny fraction of people who has to ruin it for everybody else. At this point, it's a minority of the minority who may find find it offensive. Personally, I blame the woke cancel culture that has plagued society. Social justice, one, two, three. <laughs> we are language police. <laughs> we'll fight until you're PC black and blue. And there's so many examples of double standards too. Check this one out by the Kansas City Chiefs. How is this allowed in Kansas City? But if someone wears this in DC, they're a racist, cancel them, throw them in jail. This person had a good response to which they said, I want the Redskins name back as bad as anyone else but I don't want every other Native American team to be extinguished like ours. We should be advocating for these team names, not pushing for them to change. The whole cancel culture is absurd because they're trying to switch the narrative and claim that the team is racist instead of admirable. For example, a Native American group who is suing the Washington football team over the name change goes on to say, the logo on the Redskins helmet is an actual person. It's Chief Whitecap. Every time they go out in that field, they were honoring Chief Whitecap and they were battling on the football field with the same honor and integrity and courage. They should continue to honor that. I mean, why do you think the Redskins fight song and motto is called Hail to the Redskins? Because it comes from a place of hail, Praise, salute. Hail to the Redskins. Hail, victory. Praise on the warpath. Fight for all we see. It's not meant to hate. The whole point of rebranding your team is to showcase a warrior mentality to portray a figure that goes to war in a dignified fashion. Which is why changing the Redskins name 
disregards and silences the positive legacy that the Redskins have built over the last century. It's an attempt to cancel the passionate fans who've invested their emotions, time, and unwavering support into the team. If you don't like the Redskins name, that's fine. No one guarantees you a perfect life where you're never offended by anything. Words can only bother you if you let them. Intent is everything. Someone came to me and called me a Redskin to my face. Hey. It's my fault for letting that hurt me. If you think I'm racist, that's okay. I respect your opinion, but I stand where I stand because I know deep down, I am not a racist. You're a football player. It's in your blood. That's racist. Your soul. That's racist. Your eyes. That's gay. That's homophobic. That's black. That's racist. Damn. Obviously, I feel pretty strongly about this matter, which is why I protested to change the name back in front of millions of people on live national television. And let me tell you, it took a lot of balls to do that. Watch this video next, learn about my family history, the Redskins legacy, and see how I went mega viral for my protest to bring the Redskins back on TV. My name is Fish and I stay low key. Hail to the Redskins. Hail to the Redskins.